So columnist David Brooks recently wrote an actually really terrible article on pot, where he pretty much makes the case for legalization by ironically railing against it. Now let me explain. Uh, he's, he starts out this article by talking about his youth, about how he smoked pot when he was younger. He said, for a little while in my teenage years, my friends and I smoked marijuana. It was fun. I have some fond memories of, all, of us all being silly together. I think those moments of uninhibited frolic deepened our friendships. Uninhibited frolic. Huh, fascinating. Well, so later in the article, he actually goes into why he and his friends eventually gave up pot. Now, he said, quote, I think we had a vague sense that smoking weed was not exactly something you were proud of yourself for. Okay. It's not something people admire. We were in the stage, which I guess all of us are still in, of trying to become more integrated, coherent, and responsible people. This process usually involves using the powers of reason, temperance, and self-control. Not qualities one associates with being high. Now, I think David Brooks misses the point. Most people who smoke pot don't do it all the time. They're not high all the time. They're literally not walking around floating in the clouds. That's not what happens. You can get home from work and do it that way. And that time. Just because you're a pot smoker doesn't mean you're consistently high. I don't actually do marijuana. I have no interest in it. But I have no interest also in hearing people misinform other people about drugs. And this is what David Brooks actually is doing. Now, what bothers me about this is that he was calling the people who use marijuana basically incoherent and irresponsible. Without reason, without temperance, and without self-control. Now, that's ridiculous. He's basically saying that because he didn't like it, or he grew out of it, I should say, that it should be illegal. That it should stay illegal. He said at the end, quote, In legalizing weed, citizens of Colorado are indeed enhancing individual freedom, but they are also nurturing a moral ecology in which it is a bit harder to be the sort of person most of us want to be. According to David Brooks, you should not be able to legally smoke marijuana because then it makes you not the person that you should be, that you have the potential to be. That's why we're going to make it illegal and instead throw you in jail for doing it. Makes no sense. And look, I'm not the only one who, who noticed how nonsensical this article is and how much David Brooks doesn't actually get it. Matt Taibbi of the Rolling Stone chimed in, actually, and took his article to task. Now, he said, quote, of David Brooks, here's this grasping, status-obsessed yuppie who first admits that he smoked an illegal drug without consequence in his youth, then turns around and tells us, as a graying and bespectacled post-adult, that it would be best if the drug remained illegal for the masses. I think all of us who have smoked marijuana will admit that it's a drug that doesn't bring out one's inner Einstein. That said, nobody is dumber or more, that matter, more dangerous than a drunk. And we long ago realized that we had to make alcohol legal. That's because on the legalization question, whether about pot or alcohol, is never really a referendum on the drugs in question. It's more of a, re a referendum on prohibition, which didn't work with an extremely dangerous, addictive, and destructive drug like alcohol and makes even less sense with marijuana. He's absolutely right. There's no question about it. It's not about the, uh, being the, the kind of person that you should be if you don't smoke pot or whatever David Brooks was trying to say. It's about whether or not you should go to jail, you should go to prison for using it. It's not about the moral choice because what's really moral about throwing people in prison with a, over a plant? There's nothing moral about that. It's incredibly immoral. And Matt Taibbi, his article gets into that. He writes, 
Would David Brooks feel the same way about drug laws if he was one of the hundreds of thousands of Americans arrested in weed-related incidents every year? It was over 700,000 people in 2012 alone. If he had been prevented from getting a student loan or getting a state job because such a bust, if he'd lost a professional license or had his property seized or even had a child taken away from him, Taibbi also goes out to point out the racial disparity in marijuana arrests. It's primarily black and Latino. You see, people like David Brooks and people like me and people like Matt Taibbi, if we were to fire up a joint, most likely we wouldn't get in trouble for it. We wouldn't get arrested for it. It's mostly blacks and Latinos that get arrested and thrown in prison on nonviolent drug offenses. And that's really kind of the problem here. And so when David Brooks talks about how, oh, yeah, it was fun in my youth, but then, you know, I smoked, I smoked it with my friends and everything like that. And everything was, eh, you know, it was fun, but then I decided I needed to grow up. It's not really about that. You see, legalizing marijuana isn't about that. It's about keeping people out of prison for a plant, for smoking a plant. There's an industry now based on arresting people for drug charges. It's called private prison industry. And that's the major problem here. That's what legalization is about. It's, it's, it is about personal freedom. As Brooks did admit, it's about personal freedom. It's about the freedom to be able to use that drug, but also the freedom as in not being put in prison for doing that. And that's what he still doesn't quite grasp, is that this whole issue isn't about the moral choices. It's about, it's really about keeping people out of prison. Especially those that are targeted more often. Taibi finishes out his rebuttal artic article by actually saying, by making it legal, we're deciding that letting people get high is a lesser evil compared to a person's life being derailed forever by a pointless and intrinsically hypocritical marijuana arrest. He could not be more correct. You know who else uh, smoked pot in their youth? Barack Obama. Do you know who's been uh, raiding dispensaries under whose administration? The Drug Enforcement Agency has been raiding dispensaries and throwing people into prison? Barack Obama. It's that same hypocritical stance that David Brooks is taking right now. Look, if, if, if you weren't impressed with doing pot yourself or had a bad experience and don't want to do it anymore, I'm, I'm with you 100%. You don't want to do it, that's fine. That is your choice. That is your freedom. But if you're restricting the freedom of other people, first by telling them that they what they can and can't do with their own bodies, by the way, and then locking them up if they decide to do it anyway, because it doesn't harm anyone else. How many people have died smoking marijuana? Zero. A lot more people have died from drinking alcohol. We don't prohibit that. Prohibition ended on that. And pretty soon, it's going to end on this subject, too. And the David Brooks of the world are just going to have to get used to people or being around that are doing this. And you know what? Just because somebody smokes does not make them a bad person. It does not make them a, a less of a good person. It doesn't make them stupid, as Joe Scarborough likes to point out. I know plenty of people like that that are actually incredibly smart. That are deep thinkers. That smoke. It's not what David Brooks makes it out to be. And his article was incredibly, it, it was just, it was terrible. And I'm glad Matt Taibbi was there to correct the record. 